Welcome back to Capital City Sunday. We are veering back towards politics now. We haven't talked to any of the contestants in the race for Tammy Baldwin's congressional seat. That starts today. Dennis Hall is joining us. Welcome to the program. Nice to be here. It's a pleasure. You have a lot of interesting, uh, let's just say, experiences in your background that I think set you apart from any other candidate in this race in terms of what you bring uh, as far as uh, how you view things, I'm sure, because You've been an elected official. You've worked in the private sector. You've been to the Middle East uh, after the invasion of Kuwait and, and after we invaded Iraq. Right. Let, let's start with that, because that in itself, I'm sure people are saying, what was he doing in that role? Uh, what was your role over there in the Middle East? I <clears throat> actually started out viewing it like everybody else on TV. And I said, you know, if we actually go into Kuwait, then they're going to need somebody to rebuild it. And, and this is in 91. This is in 91. And so what I did is I called up uh, DC, the Department of Commerce, and first person I talked to happened to be from Wisconsin. <laughs> that always and, and the doors flew open, and I was able to get over there when, when others weren't. Uh, that landed me on the front page of the Wall Street Journal because I was able to get in there when the big boys couldn't. Uh, I happened to be able to partner up unknowingly with the son of the Emir of Kuwait uh, when we were staging in Bahrain. And, and when you say rebuild, what exactly was your business and expertise to go help with that process? My mission was to go in there and create opportunities for my clients, okay. and which happened to be when I started out, I went to Wisconsin companies and said, I would like to get your help. I want to advocate your business uh, and get contracts for rebuilding. It worked. And... Uh, because of that, then I was named the exclusive agent for the United States to the Kuwait International Trade Fair, which means every company in the United States wanting to go to Kuwait had to come through me, which, sure. was, which was nice. That gave me a lot of experience on, in the business side and what needs to be accomplished there. And uh, then subsequently, I was invited to do it again over in, in Baghdad. So I was invited for the change over there. Uh, spent two weeks over there, and that was another Indiana Jones adventure, no question about it. And then I was uh, the first American in, in Libya the day after they lifted the terror sanctions. So I have had my foot in the door, and then every place that I would go to, I would uh, link up with someone that was in country as a business partner. Uh, in, in Iraq, it was the, the niece of the vice president of Iraq. Uh, in Libya was the son of the Minister of Transportation. So all of those inside avenues helped, you know, Wisconsin businesses get business. Talk a little bit about your background as an elected official. I know you were on the Janesville City Council president right. for a time, um, and that was quite a while ago. Why jump back into politics now, and especially in a race for Congress? I did, I did want to make one mention of the fact that uh, I said four congressional candidates. There are five, but there are four Democrats, and you're Correct. one of those running in the primary. But why jump back in now? It's such a such so much longer, uh, 32 years, I think, since you've been in elected It is, office. And, and I was the, the chief uh, advocate for the Wisconsin cities here in Wisconsin as head of the Alliance of Cities. That gave me the flavor for working with both sides of the aisle uh, in the Senate and the Assembly. So I know how the sausage is made. Right. But what got me back in is, <clears throat> I guess, is the older I've gotten, the less tolerant I've become of the, the greed and the gridlock and really the gross malfeasance of Congress. And it, it just, now that I have grandkids, it's more important that I help them and, and every generation. Uh, because what you're seeing now in Congress is, is the, the fringe elements really controlling and, and going in there and taking over Congress and, and nothing's getting You're accomplished. You're talking about special interest groups, Special interest groups on, on from every facet and that's taking away uh, the opportunities that my grandkids and, and everybody else's grandkids are going to be able to to have and that's why I'm running and, and it's really that simple. The status quo is broken. You have uh, done a unique thing among congressional candidates, and some may say uh, a crazy thing if you want to get elected, which is basically saying that you're not going to take any money um, that essentially 
doesn't come from someone that is an individual, correct? If, if I'm correct. wrong on that, that's, it's correct. That's, me, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, we've got to get back to that. You know, I, I'd love to be able to follow in the footsteps of, of Russ Feingold and, and Senator McCain in, in getting some clarity and getting some common sense back to Congress. Uh, and I'm going to work from the same center versus uh, the, the, but I'm going to work with all sides. All Would, you call yourself a moderate Democrat because you're, you'd be replacing, I guess, arguably either the most liberal or one of the most liberal Democrats in Congress in Tammy Baldwin. Absolutely. But I want to represent everybody, not just a, a certain segment of society. <clears throat> I even have uh, on my committee, I have Republicans, Libertarians, moderates, and progressives on my committee. And how else am I going to get informed and, and learn what's important if I don't listen to everybody? Talk a little bit about who you're up against, because these are people well known in the Madison area. Mark Pocan, representative, uh, he's got I think over four hundred thousand dollars at last count, probably more than that by now. Uh, Kelda Helen Roy is also a state representative who's got over two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Matt Silverman, who is an unknown like you, but how do you guys get your message out there in such a short time frame? I mean, we're only talking about a little bit over a month now before the primary. That's the toughest part, and money is the toughest part. Um, going to uh, friends and family, and, and now I'm getting strangers walking up and, uh, any, you know, coming up, here's a buck, here's five bucks, here's 50 bucks. Um, once they hear what I have to say, and the first thing I do when I talk to people and say, I am not a career politician. Sure. And that resonates because people are fed up with career politicians. I'm uh, curious if it resonates, and I'm just, this is just seriously sure. a curiosity, does it resonate as much in the Democratic Party as it does in the Republican Party, where we know it really resonates with the Tea Party? It, it does. It's across the district, whatever community, whether I'm in Mineral Point or Madison, uh, in Beloit, it, it doesn't matter. When I go up and, and I hand a brochure to somebody and I say, first of all, I'm not a career politician, and I have a day job, and they say, all right, now I'll listen to you. And, and that's really, I get that time and time and time again. People are just fed up with the career politician. A lot of people in the country would say that jobs, uh, the deficit, are probably the two biggest things that are going to decide. The presidential election, certainly. How would you advise that the president or Congress handle those issues? First thing we have to do, <clears throat> and I, I fully support the idea and the spirit of the, the Simpson-Bowles Commission. I think that's a platform that we need to use to, to get the deficit under control. I mean, it's, uh, it's staggering, and it's affecting every facet of our, our lives. And if we don't get that under control, again, our grandkids are, are going to be shoulder with a burden that they shouldn't have to have. So I, that's, I believe I'm the only one that, that supports that. I was going to say that is not a popular commission right now in either it's, party. It's not, but it's, it really is something that we have to stand up and address. You know, it's, I'm not going to be lockstep with the party, so mm -hmm. they may not like that. Uh, I'm going to do, and I don't care what label a solution has to it, if it solves the problem, I'm going to support it. You sound very independent to me. Would you consider an independent run in November if you don't win the primary? Is that a possibility? No, I haven't. No. It's my birthday, November 6th. <laughs> so so yeah. it's, no, I am a, I'm a Kennedy Democrat. I was brought up a Kennedy Democrat, um, and I will remain a Democrat. Um, I, there's, I don't, unfortunately, people don't take independence seriously. Sure, you're right. You're absolutely right. You know, yeah. And uh, that's unfortunate because, <clears throat> you know, there needs to be common sense out there well, from you, both sides. I think you say a lot of things that a lot of people probably want to hear on both sides of the aisle when you talk about common sense. And I guess we'll find out on uh, August 14th if people, uh, I guess, uh, relate to that. And, and I hope so. Yeah. All right. Well, Dennis, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate thank you. It I appreciate it a lot. All right. That's going to do it for this edition of Capital City Sunday. I want to thank Dennis Hall for joining me, as well as University of Wisconsin physicist Wesley Smith. Have questions or interview suggestions for us? You can email me, Greg Newman, at CapCitySunday at WKOW.com. It's always a beautiful Sunday in our state capital. I hope it is in your corner of Wisconsin, too.